On Monday, November 9th, pharmaceutical corporation Pfizer announced that they have a coronavirus vaccine that is more than 90% effective. Then just recently, biotechnology company Moderna said that they have a COVID vaccine that appears to be 94.5% effective. With rates like this, both vaccines seem super promising. But the tests and experiments surrounding them aren't done yet. There's still a lot of unknown factors. So what if after all these trials and tests, the vaccines still don't work? I'll be answering this pretty depressing question here only on Life's Biggest Questions. But before I tackle this question, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, of course. Now back to our scheduled programming. Everyone is desperate for a vaccine. This pandemic has killed more than 1.3 million people worldwide. And every day, millions more are infected and pass away. Pfizer and its competitor Moderna are racing against the clock to try and get out a vaccine ASAP. Obviously, both want to be the company responsible for curing COVID. But at this point, there's still a lot of uncertainty. We don't even know if COVID-19 is curable. The vaccine seems to be effective now, but what about in the long run? Will it be able to prevent someone from getting COVID? Will it keep people immunized for a long period of time? Will it reduce the transmission of the virus? Kate O'Brien, director of the immunization department of the World Health Organization said, and I quote, the preliminary results for both vaccines were incredibly exciting. Both have reported over 90% efficacy, which is really extraordinary and really meaningful. But we do have to remember that these are are both based on short term results after having been immunized. Would that efficacy hold up for over a period of weeks, months, or even years? Even now, people are questioning whether a vaccine would truly work. On top of that, she brought up the measles vaccine as an example. We have a measles vaccine that is 95% effective, but still, millions of kids around the world still get measles. The hard part, as she says, is to actually make sure that the vaccine delivers on its promise from the efficacy trial. Trials. So what if we say the vaccine for COVID doesn't work, then what? Well, for starters, this would mean more years of social distancing and wearing a mask. We all are desperate for things to go back to normal. At least with a vaccine, it might be safe for some things to resume as normal. But without a vaccine, it's not looking too promising. Meaning wearing a mask outside or when around people could be the new normal. If we can't contain the virus, then we have to stick with the measures they put in place. So wearing masks, staying six feet apart from people, having a small social circle, etc. Meaning no more big events, no more big social gatherings, you get the picture. And the poor students are still stuck with online learning, or they go back to school but have to sit in their desk all day wearing masks and face shields like they do here in Canada. This would also mean the numbers would continue to climb, millions more lives would be lost, millions more more would be infected. Again, COVID will come and go in waves. We will think everything is getting better, restrictions will ease up, and then bam, we'll get hit with another wave. If the vaccine doesn't work and things worsen, well, the government might try other ways to stop the virus, more dramatic ways. You know the Simpsons movie where Springfield gets quarantined and they get a glass dome placed over them? I mean, I'm not saying that would happen, but it's not off the table. Okay, maybe they wouldn't place an actual glass dome over towns, but they may do another full-on shutdown until the virus is eradicated. Meaning every town, every city, every country across the world is shut down. The only time we can go out is for groceries, but that's it. Or maybe we don't even go out to grocery shop, but we do it all online. We shop online, order it online, and then have it delivered to our front doors. But again, not all countries have this capability, and not all people can afford this luxury. So millions would suffer. They may just do something dramatic until the virus is eradicated completely. Because the only way a virus survives is with a host. But if there's no hosts around, then the virus can't last. Now, we were in lockdown, but it only lasted a couple of months before things reopened again. This time, they may keep us in lockdown for half a year to a year until the virus is fully eradicated. It could even take longer than that. 
I mean, the other option is continuing on with how things are, but as of now, nothing is changing. The virus numbers aren't going down, so we need something more dramatic like a full lockdown for the numbers to go down. But this means all the small businesses will suffer even more than they already are. They would probably be forced to close unless they could successfully run online. The other option is they may choose to implement more restrictions. Maybe hazmat suits will be the new fashion trend. I mean, studies show masks help, but they don't guarantee 100% protection from the virus, especially if you aren't wearing them properly or aren't social distancing with them on. Maybe we need an added layer of protection, aka hazmat suits. Now whenever we want to go outside, we just gotta gear up in a full suit, which would honestly suck, especially during the summer. But hey, if the vaccine doesn't work, then we need some other way to protect ourselves. Hazmat suits might be the way to go, which has its pros and cons. Pros, the companies making them will rack in millions of dollars. Cons, if they become mandatory, we will be forced to buy them and we know that they will be overpriced. And what if you can't afford them? What happens then? And would you need multiple, like one for every day of the week? Another pro is, like I said before, it's another level of protection against the virus. Maybe this way cases will go down. Another con, those things ain't comfortable. I mean, I haven't worn one personally, but I can't imagine it being comfortable. Especially if you suffer from claustrophobia, then that would be a nightmare. And it muffles your talking, so it's gonna be really hard to understand what the heck everyone is saying. And of course, you'll have the anti-hazmatters, like the anti-maskers, but with hazmat suits. So those that refuse Used to wear them. Having hazmat suits would be like among us in real life. But honestly, if everyone was wearing a hazmat suit, it would be chaotic. Imagine going to the mall with your mom in one of those and then losing her. Everyone looks the same. Good luck finding her. Then it also raises the concern of people who don't handle them or wear them correctly. Everyone would need to follow donning and doffing protocols, but you know people are careless and would probably just bring in their contaminated suit and just handle it without care. Well, then that defeats the purpose. And then you have the fact that hazmat suits would be flying off the shelves. People would be stockpiling, just like the whole toilet paper incident. It would take a while before everyone would be able to have access to them. And we probably would be facing a lot of shortages with them. You get the picture. Enough with this topic though. Let's move on to travel and restrictions. Now this is the last point I'll be touching on. Here's a question for you. When's the last time you've been on vacation? For me, it was right before this whole pandemic started. But it could be my last vacation and your last vacation for a long time. If the vaccine doesn't work and we continue on with how the things are, countries may close their borders for good, meaning no one can come into the country, which will take a toll on a lot of countries, especially the ones that thrive off of tourism. But in the end, they may do this to try and prevent more infected people from coming or leaving their country. In the end, it's all done to stop the spread. Although everything I've said is pretty negative, let's look at the positives. If Pfizer or Moderna's vaccine doesn't work, that's okay. You really think these big companies are going to stop trying to create a vaccine just because they failed? No, it's going to propel them further. Through failure, they will learn and adapt. They won't give up. They will keep going on with their trials and will continue studying COVID. We can't expect them to get it right on the first round. They will need to experience some sort of failure in order to learn and gain a better understanding on COVID. So the first set of vaccines available might not work, but along the road, they might develop one that does. Hopefully that gave you all just a little glimmer of hope. But in the end, we really need a vaccine that works. If we can't get one, it's gonna be years of COVID because social distancing and wearing a mask is not enough to stop the spread. Either we suffer for years or something dramatic happens like a worldwide shutdown until COVID is gone for good, which even then might not work. So basically, we really need a vaccine, and we better pray that it actually works effectively. But even when we do get an effective vaccine, it's going to be years before things resume to normal, if it even can. Now that was kind of depressing, so let's move on to our comment shout out portion. I'll be shouting out comments from my video, what if Homer Simpson was real? Eno Knows Best commented, if Homer Simpson was real, that would mean Arnold Schwarzenegger would be president. The US government is capable of trapping the cities under a glass dome and predicting the future is possible. Yeah, that's uh, pretty crazy, but you know what? You know best. Get it? Because your name is like Inu knows best. Ah, okay. Terminator156 commented, what if scientists discovered immortality? 
kind of funny because your name is Terminator, you know, like, I'll be back. It's really funny. But uh, the immortality would be cool. I'm down for that, actually. Maybe not. Do I want to live forever? I mean, it'd be cool in theory. Anyway, just skip that. I don't know. Renelle Hamal commented, Lindsay is the best host of the channel. Thank you, Renelle, and thank you for your constant support. We see you. Ethan Trimble commented, what if the Power Rangers were real? That'd be cool. I want to be a Power Ranger. I like that. Nicholas A commented, yay, a kind of normal video. I don't know what you define as normal because Homer Simpson being real is anything but normal, but okay there. And that's all the comments I'm shouting out for today's video. Make sure to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Life's Biggest Questions for more thought provoking videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and stay curious, YouTube. On Monday, November 9th, pharmaceutical corporate. On Monday, November 9th, pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical. Whoa. Okay. Pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical. Corporation Pfizer. Corporation Pfizer. Why is the thing like that? I'll be, I'll be answering. Now back to our scheduled programming. That sounded weird. Now back to our <clears throat> woo. And every day, millions more are infective. Infective. Pfizer and its competitor. Wow. Will it keep people immune? Immunized. Will it keep people immune? <laughs> Kate O'Brien, director of the immune. Oh, promise from the efficacy. Oh, that was so weird. Yes. <laughs>